Hello, I'm Chris Brown, Fleet Group Editor at Bobbitt, and welcome to the next episode of Fast Forward Interview Series. Fast Forward is about connecting with leaders in fleet, tech, and automotive to show what the future holds for fleets of all types. In this episode, I interview Ryan Wilkinson, Chief Technology Officer of IntelliShift. IntelliShift is a provider of connected fleet solutions. Ryan and I will address today's vehicle supply crisis, the importance of maintaining existing vehicles in this environment, and how data is being used in new ways to keep vehicles on the road longer. But before we begin, be sure to subscribe to the Fleet Forward YouTube channel so you don't miss future episodes of Fast Forward. And hey, feel free to drop us a comment on the channel. Okay, let's get into it. Well, Ryan, welcome. Thanks for having me, Chris. Really appreciate it. Sure. Well, you know, uh, I think that uh, fleet managers today, one of the biggest things that they're facing and will be facing through 2022 probably is the availability of vehicles and supply chain issues. Um, I mean, this is just probably the biggest headline of this year and next. Uh, now, what are fleets going to do? I mean, one obvious thing that they can do is they're going to have to hold on to their vehicles longer. Um, and there's a variety of ways to do it. But I guess today we're going to look at how you can really use uh, data to do that. Um, do you want to throw out any, any opening thoughts on, on that, Ryan? Yeah, yeah. Thanks, Chris. And yeah, it's, it's crazy what's going on right now with the, the global supply chain constraints specifically on on the vehicles and obviously the number of vehicles that are operating in commercial fleets today you know how are they able to kind of maintain their fleet so uh, it's really looking at technology and, and data to be able to keep those assets and vehicles on the road and in operation for as long as possible before they can get their hands on on, on new fleet vehicles yeah sure so um you know really longevity preventative maintenance right so we obviously follow manufacturers recommended maintenance schedules. I mean, that's a given. Um, but how else are you seeing commercial fleets start to leverage data um, as it relates to a preventative maintenance schedule? Yeah, so that, that, that's a good question. And obviously following the manufacturer recommended maintenance schedule seems like a no brainer. And that's, that's a good starting point. But then how do you leverage data that the commercial vehicles are producing today, whether it's the driver behavior metrics that may be coming from the onboard um, telematics solutions and adjusting as needed. So if you have extremely aggressive drivers, maybe you need to service those brakes and tires more frequently, or perhaps you're adjusting based on environmental um, conditions, whether it's weather, um, if you're in uh, extremely um, extreme climate areas where weather can play a factor and adjusting the schedules accordingly and then leveraging the data so you can look at year over year how you're doing on preventing those costly breakdowns and, and using those different metrics to be able to drive that adjustment in some of those preventative maintenance schedules. Yeah, I mean, you do make a good point about um, really it, it starts to become if you've got it, if you're five years in the telematics, it really starts to become year over year metrics and um, making decisions off of that. Um, you make some a good point. Um, let me ask you about. So here's another thing, too. Now that folks are into telematics uh, a few years in their fleet, um, I mean, driver behavior metrics really can lead to it. it it's an obvious safety play. But how does it relate to maintenance? Yeah, I mean, there's a couple different areas, obviously, maintenance, if, if there's any, any um, collisions or anything like that. So video telematics, obviously, can capture that uh, um, to give more insight into what exactly happened. Obviously, vehicles in the body shop means downed vehicles, and that, that affects an operation. But then beyond that, looking at um, driver behavior metrics can drastically impact fuel consumption, as well as um, tire wear and tear. So you know, just in, in working with some commercial fleets where they're starting to look at that driver behavior. And then when they tie that to 
the maintenance costs of the vehicles, it's pretty significant when you start leveraging that data. So if you can curtail that aggressive driver behavior, um, you typically obviously will, will see reduction in accidents, but then you're also seeing a reduction in, in fuel spend and fuel consumption, but then also maintenance costs. So the costly breakdowns are sometimes attributed to that aggressive or improper use of the vehicle, as well as uh, it can be even as easy as looking at vehicle usage. So nights and weekends and, and, and other data that, that is core to a telematic solution, but are you leveraging that data to say, hey, if the vehicles being utilized on nights and weekends on authorized time and, and that's 10% of my usage, well then that's 10% of your fuel and 10% of your maintenance costs are being attributed to that. So putting policies and procedures in place to actually leverage the data that's being produced by whether it's a telematic solution, an OEM telematics or a video telematic solution, I think it is a big part of it. Yeah, sure. And I guess it's dividing the data in different ways, uh, even per, per driver to sort of uh, measure driver A's uh, and driver B's uh, maintenance on whatever vehicle they're driving. I mean, that's possible now, right? Yep. And then what we're seeing, especially on the, on the larger commercial fleets, they're even taking it a step further and saying, hey, above just the driver level, is it business unit or region level? Maybe we need to um, you know, look at the East region safety managers policies and procedures compared to the West Coast safety manager um, and, and just start benchmarking that. And that's once again, just based on all of the data that these, these commercial vehicles are producing today, how can we slice and dice that and better set metrics and KPIs for, you know, keeping our vehicles on the road ultimately. Yeah, that's a really good point. Um, you know, I think fleets uh, are certainly well aware of telematics now and, and have been for years. And I think they're, um, when they onboard telematics, they've got a choice. I mean, do they go for uh, the diagnostics, the engine diagnostics, or just, just go for track or trace? Um, what's the thought process now uh, for commercial fleets in terms of like being able to look at engine fault codes and have that as part of their telematic system? Yeah, no, uh, that's a great question. I, th I think it's, it's becoming more and more table stakes that you're going to be plugging into that diagnostic port when, when you're deploying a, a telematics device or, or connectivity to the vehicle today, whether it's either onboard OEM or whether it's an aftermarket third-party solution. Um, so I think it's table stakes on getting the data, but that's really then where, how you're going to actually leverage that once you get that data to the cloud. So like these commercial vehicles, they have obviously a, a ton of intelligence in the cab of the vehicle where they're sending the alert to the operator or they're displaying miles per gallon, but it's always been siloed in the vehicle. So now that we're getting that data more and more in the cloud, now how can we better leverage that data to provide either predictive analytics or um, eradicate the silos that are traditionally seen because this data can be leveraged by people other than fleet, right? So now we can start getting that to trigger an automated work order. So if the check engine light comes on, that can automatically trigger a work order in the maintenance solution. So I think it is really a lot more table stakes to be able to get that, but now it's kind of the next generation or the next evolution of how do we better leverage that to ultimately streamline the maintenance for the fleet. Yeah, and it's really about not ignoring those warning signs when you get them, right? Um, and so how, so to your point, now you really got to use the data, but how should fleets be thinking about uh, the data that's coming to them and acting on it immediately? Yeah, and that's, that's part of that next evolution here is making sure that, right, you don't want data overload, right? And that, that can happen. So how can you make sure that you have the tools in place to be able to configure and make sure that when there is that critical issue, you know about it and you can take swift action to prevent a costly breakdown or maybe a costly tow or whatever that looks like. So I think looking at different technologies that can allow you the configuration on the real-time notifications, real-time alerts, and then also better training of your operators, making sure that, that they're well aware that, you know, as the front lines, they need to be in tune with the equipment as well. Um, and, and, and looking at the data that's on that dash, right? Not ignoring the check engine light, obviously seems like a no brainer, but um, beyond that, but once you have that data in a cloud solution or a cloud platform, making sure that it's configurable and, and you can get alerts in real time to be able to swift, uh, swiftly take action. Sure. 
Uh, let's just turn to fleet inspections, like vehicle inspections. Um, we certainly know that there's a lot of fleets out that are still doing pen and paper, and even they probably know that that's, uh, they're going to have to migrate at some point. But what they may not know is, um, you know, now that you move to a digital system, how can you act on that data from the digital inspection to make better decisions? What do you think? Yeah, I mean, the, the inspection points produce so much data, right? So obviously, if it's on paper, it's it's borderline useless to, to the actual back office operation in a, in a, in a large fleet. But then um, once you have that digital data now, how are you going to leverage that? Once again, if it's tying in with the maintenance, so then you can adjust your preventative maintenance schedules. So if you're constantly seeing failures of a certain system, whether it's a hydraulic system, hey, maybe we need to adjust the PM or the preventative maintenance schedule for that specific so of that specific component on the truck. So you prevent those failed inspections that ultimately lead to costly downtime. So it's really looking at the data that's being produced by that and then correlating that to the preventative maintenance data that we have with the completed work orders and then looking at how we can be more um, data focused and analyze that or even predictive in, in the future to say, hey, this is what we recommend based on the data. These, these are the adjustments the solution recommends for the preventative maintenance schedule adjustments that are needed. And that can be as simple as looking at, you know, tire tread inspections where, you know, if you're capturing photos now with the inspections and it's just more and more data, it's more and more data points that can be leveraged to make that predictive algorithm that much more intelligent. Mm -hmm, sure. Uh, just broadening it out, what else are you seeing uh, in terms of using data to understand uh, trends? Yeah, I think I think um, a digital inspection, a digital maintenance solution are, are going to become more and more table stakes, just like you had mentioned, kind of getting engine diagnostic data. But then next level is now using that data, maybe looking at frequency of service um, or, or potential uh, vehicle abuse. So if you're seeing you know, XYZ fleet or XYZ make and model is consistently coming in for similar repairs, right? How can we now look at that to be more intelligent in how we're planning our fleet and how we're planning that preventative maintenance program that we put together? So I think it ultimately is, is tying all of these different data points together, which once again, we're either traditionally siloed, whether it's just an inspection solution or just a maintenance solution, um, and, and really trying to tie those together because the more data you can get in one spot, the more powerful the analytics can be on the output of that solution. Sure. Um, and just to close off, I mean, where do you see this technology going? I mean, what can we expect that isn't quite here, but coming soon? Yeah, I think it's going to be more and more um, predictive on the vehicle side as well. So I think uh, obviously the vehicles are getting smarter and smarter. Um, obviously, assuming we can keep that supply chain going, and, and hopefully that lets up um, in the tail end of 2022 here, but um, I think the vehicles are going to be continuously getting smarter and smarter, where they're going to be able to potentially predict um, failures and, and, and then raise that to the cloud through the connectivity that they're being upfitted with from the OEM. So I think the, the edge processing of the data will continue continuously evolve. And then I also think, you know, video can play a part in that as well. We're seeing, you know, AI or machine learning, machine vision in the actual inspections that are happening. So instead of just a photo, right, maybe you're taking an actual video of the tire and then, uh, you know, a machine vision inspection can happen right at the edge in the palm of your hand with the power that we have in our smartphones today. So I think more and more edge data processing is going to be um, paramount in, in kind of streamlining some of these commercial fleet maintenance solutions. Got it. Great. Well, we uh, certainly broke off a lot of stuff here and uh, uh, really surfaced a lot of interesting uh, uh, trends. Um, it's up to fleets to kind of uh, put this into practice. And it looks like we're kind of at a spot where we kind of have to at this point. So, uh, hey, Ryan, thanks for the conversation. I really appreciate it. And uh, we'll talk soon. Yes, thanks, Chris. Really appreciate you having me on the show.